Okay, here we go. Next step in 4.5 is we want to create a motion graph of the situation that we have here, this system that we have. And what we're interested in then is how does the angle of rotation of this axle in the middle, the handle, how does that affect the height of the top of the follower rod at any given time? We could also do the bottom of the follower rod since it's the same motion at the top and the bottom, right? But we're going to focus on the top of the follower rod for this particular activity. It's really simple to do. All we have to do is we come over. You know, first of all, well, let's make sure that we understand that whenever we come here and we animate the model, do take a second to verify the fact that your follower cap is staying on the hex cam. If you can guarantee that, then you hit escape, come back here. And what we're going to do then is we're simply going to change this angle and we're going to note at each of those angles the measurement that we see here as precise as possible. Okay, so this is just shy of five. Okay, we want to know where that measurement is at any given angle. You're going to record your measurements using the template that I've created for you that I've shared with you on Canvas. Okay. So here are the couple of things that I know. In the last video, we typed in a nominal diameter of 0 0.75 inches. And so everybody in your group is going to use a nominal diameter of 0 0.75 in this particular example. Also, your name is going to go in the location up here above the type of cam you have. Since we're working with the hex cam, I'm going to put it in on this one. And I'm just going to wait, work my way around. I'm going to go back to Fusion, and I'm going to come here, and I'm going to say, okay, what if the angle here was... You just double click on the angle what if it's zero degrees so that's where it's starting already i'm going to come over here and we're going to say well that looks like to me it is just shy of five okay so if this is four and an eighth there's four and a half five eighths six eighths seven eighths it's not seven eighths it's not quite five let's say halfway in between let's say four and 15 sixteenths of an inch okay so i come back over here and I type in at zero degrees, it's four and 15 sixteenths. Might be easier to type like this, four plus 15 sixteenths, okay? And it'll tell you that's 4.9375, and that's fine, just leave it, four decimals is cool. Let's come back here, and I'll just walk you through the first couple, okay? What if I come down here and double click on this angle, and I change it to 45? Hit enter. Back to my right view. And it looks to me, here's five, here's five and an eighth. It's not quite there. Let's call it five and one sixteenth of an inch. Back to my table at 45 degrees, it is equal to five plus another one sixteenth. Hit enter. And I'm just going to work my way around and we're going to do all of these. Okay. Now, one thing to keep in mind, and it says down here, the 359 degree row is only for the all star that you place to do the snail cam. Okay, whoever the person in your group is that's doing the snail cam, because that's right before the drop occurs, we need to know the maximum height, okay? So nobody else has to do that except for the snail cam person. But everybody else is going to go through and fill out their table, and then you're going to do a formula that calculates the minimum value for this row, this column, and a formula that does the maximum for your particular cam, okay? That's the first set of data. When you get done with that, then it's going to be time for us to come together as a class and work on the next tab. So what you're going to do then is you're going to come over here and we're going to talk about, notice it says max displacement. So if I have the 0 0.75 hex cam, I'm going to take my data for the max displacement. That would be the volume or the, the excuse the volume. I don't know where I got that. The formula that calculates the max displacement for the hex cam will be right here. I'm going to take that number, I'm going to copy it, and I'm going to paste it in right here. And everybody's going to be doing that. So we have 24 values here for 24 people in our class, and we're going to use this moving forward in the class to do some scatter plots and trend lines. So hopefully that makes sense what you're going to do. Now it's your turn to go place your cam with your nominal diameter that you've been assigned. We work together as a group to get all of this data collected and transferred over into this table.